Okay, so a bit of a recap of everything that I've done for tonight. So this is a recap of the nervous system. We know that the uh, central nervous system consists of the brain and the spine. So the brain and the spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system consists of the peripheral nerves. So everything that is outside of that. So everything but the brain and the spinal cord. Now, with the brain, we've learned that there are three different sections of the brain. Now, the first one, the hindbrain, is the most primitive, and it consists of three different segments. It consists of the medulla, the pons, and the cerebellum. Now, just a little bit of a recap with that. The medulla, we know, actually uh, has a sympathetic, so a stimulatory response, which is the flight or fight response. Now, if something happens, say a lion was about to attack you, you're running up towards you, you either fight and try and attack it back and defend yourself, or you run away, so that is fight or flight. Now that actual action causes uh, the blood to go back to the head, the legs, everything that is going to help you in that situation. Whereas uh, the rest and digest, the parasympathetic response from the medulla is uh, after that that happens, so after the sympathetic fight or flight response, which means that it is actually calming it down. So rest and digest, so that makes the heart uh, go back to a normal pace, it makes digestion start all over again, and basically you're in a resting state. So that is the medulla, that bit down there, which connects to this spinal cord. Now we know that the pons is the Latin word for bridge, so we think of pons as a bridge. It is bridging the connections from the spinal cord, so all the senses from the rest of the body are going up to the uh, pons and they are being distributed back into specific areas where they will probably be then rerouted into even more specific areas once again. Now that is basically, it's kind of like a super highway in a sense. Uh, if you're a computer geek, think of it as a computer uh, central processing unit. Uh, so that uh, basically means it is getting the information and sending it to different areas. We know that the cerebellum here, the little brain as it's called, consists of approximately the same amount of neurons as the rest of the brain does. It is just more compact, hence the darker colour. And not only that, it is responsible for things such as balance, uh, motor coordination, so the smoothing of the actual um, motions and that type of stuff. And um, yeah, this entire area basically is, can, takes in control the autonomic functions. So everything that you don't think about. So we think of this what here, if you can't remember, basically taking over the breathing, the heart rate, your digestion, everything like that, things that you don't actually have to think about. Now, the midbrain, we won't even worry about that for the moment. I don't care about it. You shouldn't care about it at the moment. Well, we should care that we have one, but don't worry about learning it for, as such. Uh, the forebrain is, as we said before, compri uh, comprised of two different segments that are then made up of different segments again. So this has the talencephalon and it has the diencephalon. Now we know the diencephalon is made up both of the thalamus and the hypothalamus. Now as I said before, the thalamus, when you think of it, thalamus, think of fart because butt smell. Basically, it takes in all the senses except smell. The olfactory is actually closer to the front. So, think of all senses but smell. Hypothalamus. Now, the ones that I talked about with this is basically the uh, functions, so the endocrine functions, and also the homeostatic functions. So if things uh, get sent to the hypothalamus, that uh, could be a chemical composition of the blood, uh, for instance, the carbon dioxide levels, uh, it could be temperature, it could be absolutely anything. The hypothalamus helps regulate, regulate homeostatic functions. Now, the two, uh, for instance, I'll draw them out, so we've got the hypo, that's the thalamus, sorry, and we have the hypothalamus. Now we have that little bit at the bottom, which is the posterior pituitary gland. Now, or posterior pituitary part of the uh, pituitary gland. Now that releases both ADH, which is antidiuretic hormone, and oxytocin. Nearly forgot how to spell it. Now, antidiuretic hormone, 
basically means you're reabsorbing water because anti-diuretic, anti-urination. Think of it that way, so not urinating. You're going to be reabsorbing the water back up into your system through the kidneys. So that is where ADH acts upon. Now oxytocin, think of it as the big O, like I said before. It means uh, basically it's in arousal. That is the function, in a sense, of that hormone. So uh, when it comes down to breastfeeding for a pregnant lady, oh, not a pregnant lady, duh, for a mother after she's been pregnant, the oxytocin will actually be stimulated from the fact that the baby is suckling at the nipple, go up to the hypothalamus, the hypothalamus will release it intermittently, and that will actually release the milk, so what is called the, like, the releasing effect, basically, and then the lactate comes out. Now the oxytocin has been kind of, yeah, it's been brought into different situations. So it also comes into arousal. Uh, as I said, think of it as the big O because there's been a lot of experiments, as sus as that sounds, when it comes to uh, the serum level of oxytocin uh, after, during and before orgasm, that kind of stuff. So think of it as the big O. And not only that, the hypothalamus is the pleasure center of the brain. So uh, anything that pleasures you, weirdly as that sounds, um, is going to be have an effect on the hypothalamus. So basically anything that makes you happy will go to there, or affect there. Now the forebrain, the rest of the forebrain, the telencephalon, as I said before, is the rest of the brain. So that's the top bit just there. Now that is separated into four lobes. The frontal, the parietal, the occipital, and the temporal. Now this can be separated into different fragments again, which is a good thing but a bad thing because what you've got to do, you've got to remember each part. So the frontal is generally associated with stuff like uh, language production, planning, complex uh, or complex associations and also cognition. So cognitive function, uh, thinking, basically yeah, your thoughts come from the frontal. So that is when uh, things happen with the frontal cortex, uh, frontal cortex, sorry, frontal lobe, uh, could be a tumour, could be a frontal lobotomy, anything. That is where the person's uh, actual characteristics will be removed or altered in some way. So that is that part of the brain. And this section here, which is called the prefrontal, is basically where everything I just said is stored. So in that part there, but it can expand. Uh, the next part, the parietal, is the somatosensory. So this basically, any um, senses from the rest of the body will be sent to this part of the brain. Now, when it comes down to feeling, uh, think of the dancing moose, okay? So you sort of got that, and like lip, big lip, little lip, and it comes down, big arm, down, leg, little arm, and then a little bit of a drive out. Okay, now that goes almost from head to toe with the senses. So each part of the body is represented here. Some are bigger than others because what happens is it is focused on some areas. So for instance, um, if it's because this part is the motor cortex, your hands will be in a large area because you need a lot of control over your hands. The legs won't be as such because your legs don't do too much. So if you're running, it is basically the same motion. Whereas the motor control, which is also incorporated into this as well, needs to be a lot finer. So therefore you need a greater area to be able to control a lot more different movements. Now the occipital uh, lobe, which is the one at the back, so this one right here is the one that is responsible for your vision. So if you get hit in the back of the head, uh, or if you've been hit in the back of the head before, you may notice that you might go blind for a little bit, or blurry vision. Uh, that could be not a good sign at all, it may mean you've hemorrhaged. Uh, but basically what happens, from the eyes, so from the eyes it gets sent up to the back, so via the optic nerve, and there's something called a uh, ret um, retinotopic map, which basically means the image is being projected into different places. 
and that is where you get the vision from. So if you're seeing something that's in front of you, everything is going to be crossed over, but your brain flips the image around. Although you see it as it is, it's, it's a strange concept, you may want to actually look it up again, but basically think of it as the film on a camera. So each different uh, cell is a different segment of that film. For those kids that don't know what film is, well, I'm getting a bit worried. Now, the temporal region generally has to do with sound. So because it is close to the ears, it goes directly there. Uh, there is a tonotopic map. So similar to what I just said about the retinotopic map with the uh, back of the occipital lobe. So instead of it being a picture though, it is each uh, stimulus is re represented as a sound. So you uh, basically what it is, is high pitch sound here, uh, low pitch sound there, and each different stimulus has a different section. So that is down in this area. Uh, there is also a part called the POT, so the parietal, occipital and temporal, which is in this region here, and that's basically integration of all the senses. So, which is a pretty handy thing when you think about it, because if you're running from something, you may want to be able to hear it. You may need to see it, but you also need to respond to it, and in different ways. Now, that is the brain in a nutshell also known as your head. Um, I think I've covered quite a little bit, not quite a little bit, quite a bit in that quick bit. And yeah, we'll see if anything else needs to be covered. I'll send another video. If you ain't no punk, buy your shorty Michael Geico for your money. money.